All right, guys, I'm, I wanted to make a quick video that talked about workflow, at least my workflow. I see a lot of tutorials online where there is different types of workflows and some of them don't make sense to me. So I have a picture from a hike I just did last week with my friend Caitlin. Hope she doesn't mind me borrowing this picture to use for this video, but I wanted to talk about how I edit my pictures. Now the, the type of edit I'm gonna go for is a very warm kind of earthy look to it where it's very warm, uh, darker shadows, lesser highlights. You'll see what the end result kind of looks like. Uh, but I wanna talk about how I get to that. So if this helps you guys out, I'm glad. If this gives you an aha moment when you're doing your pictures, great. So let's get right into it. This is basically the the method that I use and the order that I go into when I edit all my pictures. The edits are sometimes different based on what colors I want and all that stuff, but you're gonna see where how it is I get an end result just from a simple picture. So here we have my friend Caitlin. She is just kind of posing, you know, being kind of cool, whatever, being how she is. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all the way down. We usually start up here I'm gonna scroll all the way down here. So we're gonna to go to calibration. The reason why I do this is because typically out of camera, you can't tell, but there are several colors in the image that are very green, purple, and like royal blue, all right? So we wanna change that. I tend to go towards an orange and teal look. So usually what I do is the sun's in my face, so it's kind of hard to see, but I like to go until I get some, almost like a pink look in the picture and then I kind of stop. And then a lot of times I do go up in saturation. If you were to remove saturation, that's what you get. We don't want that. So I'll go up just about 20 or so there. Now, since we're dealing with outdoors, what I don't want is I don't want this to look too yellow. I want this to look more on the warm tone. So I'm gonna go towards the, more towards the green hue as opposed to the yellow hue. I'll probably just go about 20. If you were to remove anything here, that's what you get if you remove saturation. So we're gonna go up in saturation. I'll probably match 20. Now this is just kind of roughly what I'm what I would normally do. It's hard to see because of the sun, but I'll do my best for you guys. Uh, now typically the reds, a lot of times I don't move much. So if I go up in reds, you see what happens. If I remove, you see what happens. For this one, I think I might remove. I don't know if this is how I edited this picture the first time, but I'll actually bring this up maybe plus four. Not too much. You guys can already see the before. Oh, actually, that's how it's supposed to look at the end. Let me show you guys what the before should look like here. So this is the before. And then right now here is our, so far what we've adjusted. Uh, the other thing is let's go ahead and for Instagram, let's crop this eight by 10 vertical. I'll probably put her eyes right on that top line, close that out. Next thing I'm gonna do is I love to add vignetting. However, for this picture, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna because you have a lot of brightness on this end. Uh, I could probably put a graduated filter down here, uh, but you typically, I like to center my, and frame my subject with that vignetting, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna skip the grain because this picture might not need it. Next thing I do is I click on remove chromatic aberration and enable profile correction. I always do that before I mess with anything else. Next, the sharpening, I usually don't touch it. I used to touch it a lot. I boost it up to 50 or 60. Uh, now the only thing I do is I just touch the mask. If you hit alt on your computer if you're using Windows and then drag the, the bar, um, you will see what gets highlighted. So anything in white is going to get highlighted. Anything in black will be left alone. Uh, I'll put my mask up at an 85. And then we come over to the tone curve. So you can see how I'm kind of skipping some stuff. Uh, and I'm starting from the, like, the very end because I want to get the picture at a certain color so I know what I'm working with. Now, typically for my tone curves, I don't tend to go into the red, green, or blue channel. Every now and then I do. I do have one, uh, if I go with this one, this vintage cinema 
green and yellow indoor. So this is supposed to be used indoors. And the reason why it's so blue is because it, it, um, it compensates for tungsten lighting. So this wouldn't work outside unless I bumped up the, the warmth. And you can see there's grain on this. There's all sorts of stuff on that one. I have a warm and gold one that I use. I would have to mess with this a lot in order for it to work. So I won't touch that. So I'll just make uh, my own tone curve here. So I like to bring this down, darken this a little bit. And then I'm actually gonna put this below, bring the highlights down, probably about there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and what I, I usually say, I crush the whites. I'm gonna crush the blacks. All right, so we have a lot of darkness going on here. Uh, one thing that I could do is I could probably bring this up like that. Now we have a lot of punchy contrast, which I, I typically don't like a lot of punch. So I'll probably just bring this back down a little bit. All right, next, um, I like to mess with my, uh, with my color, my white balance. I'm gonna make this really warm because uh, this is in Vegas um, at a hot spring and it's supposed to be very warm. It's not, actually it was a cloudy day, but you still have a lot of reds. I'm just gonna slightly move the tint up two points on the magenta side. The next thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna mess with the highlights. Okay, so that's good. I'm also, actually, you know what, before I do that, I usually remove contrast. The less contrast, the better. So I'm just gonna go up to 50. That looks pretty good. And uh, let's see, now we can mess with the highlights because now I don't have to change them that much. I'll probably do 15. Shadows, I am gonna raise my shadows. I wanna see her face. Uh, there's a big part in the hat area here where we really wanna do Trying to be respectful and not zoom in on that. <laughs> Those puckered lips. I don't want to embarrass her in case she sees this. Um, if we bring down the whites, it, it really flattens out the image. If we bring them up, really adds a little bit more punch to, those, to, the, to the brightness of the picture. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually bring them down a little bit. I'll do about 30. I usually go to about the point where I like it. So right there, I was like around 34, 35. And I was like, that looks pretty good. And then I come back down because I don't trust myself. So wherever I think is good, I usually go back or go forward like an extra couple of ones just to make sure I don't go overboard. Now with the blacks, I could raise them or I could darken them. It's up to me here. I think what I could do is just compromise and leave them alone, to be honest. So if we go back to, sorry guys, I know that doesn't really work. This is the original image here. And if we go to my copy, cause I didn't want to change the effect on this one. You can see how we're just slightly adjusting it. We're not Photoshopping. We're not trying to do some crazy edit. We're just trying to enhance the colors, all right? Next thing is we are outdoors, so texture, do I want texture? Maybe. Do I want to lessen the texture? Maybe, because this is more of a portrait. You could tell that everything behind her is um, because of the aperture I'm using. Um, it's kind of blurred out, so there's some bokeh going on. Um, so I might lessen the texture. Clarity, I'm going to leave that alone. Dehaze. I'm gonna leave that alone. Vibrance, we're gonna push this up to about 25. We're gonna bring down the saturation down five. As you could tell, her jacket is very faded right now. So maybe I do need to bring down the blacks just slightly. Do about 10. 10 looks good. Now we are ready to adjust the colors over here. Now the oranges, I think I want to leave just about where they're at. If anything, I would move them a little bit over to minus three. All right, and then for the yellows, yellows are not really affected too much. I think I would push them over 15 so I can get some of that green in there. And then for the greens, not a lot of green. I might leave that alone. Now the reds. Pink or orange? I think I would go towards the pink minus four. 
should be okay. Just slight adjustments. Saturation, we're gonna bring up the reds, maybe 10. I think that's mostly the tip of her nose and lips. For the orange, definitely bring up the orange is about 15. As you could tell, not a lot affected by the yellow, so I'll leave yellow alone. Um, I am gonna take out the blue, because there is absolutely no blue on here except on the whites. So I'm gonna take that out so I can have pure whites here, 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 and her black jacket. Her black jacket had highlights of blue. Lastly, luminance. Um, I will bring this down a little bit. You could tell that on her cheek. It's affecting her cheek a little bit. So I am gonna add some color to her because she looks a little bit on the pale side because the highlights might be a little bit uh, overexposed. I'm gonna bring down, see I liked around 20, but I'm gonna bring down to 15. That looks a little bit nice. Like I said, not much affected by the yellow. I'm still gonna bring it down about minus eight. Not much with the greens. I'm gonna leave that alone. So there's that. Next thing we can do is we can go ahead and change the highlights and the shadows. So we're gonna do some split toning here. Now, for the split tone, I like to just kind of drag and see what color calls me, and it would be something about right here. So I usually select that, and then I just kind of see what how much I want to add to it. I'll probably add about 15. 15 looks okay. We're getting really warm here, so let me see if I can balance this out by adding some sort of tint here. Now we're working with orange, so technically you would want like an aqua. So I'm thinking I might be doing something around a green or maybe something literally that is aqua. I kind of like, oh, go back. Kind of like this, it's more on the blue side. So now that we, I have the one that I like, I'm gonna bring this up. I'm just gonna slightly add some. I'm gonna make, change the balance so that we focus more on the highlights, about plus 10. And there you have, I think the finished product. I don't think this needs any green. If I were to add green, I like to add a lot of green. Um, I'll change the size to about maybe 30. Round this is fine. And there you have a very cool like retro, like, Edit, I don't know how to explain it, um, but it looks nice. You have no blue in the image, got rid of all of that. Caitlin looks like she's just having fun. Nice color on this as compared to the very first one and we take a look at that. So this was the original picture. Very contrasty, punchy with black and white, almost no color around her. Now with the new one, we have this very cool effect almost looks like a LUT. I might actually save this preset, um, but it looks a lot better. Color is a little bit more balanced, plenty of uh, saturation on there. If I wanted to add more saturation, now that I added the split toning, I could. I probably would bring up the vibrance, to be honest. Yeah, the vibrance looks good, so I'd probably bring that up to about 35. Um, and now you have you could totally tell it's a cloudy day. The other one made it seem like it was very shiny, uh, shiny, sunny with hard shadows. This one, it looks like the lighting is a little bit more of a soft box look. It's a little bit more evenly dis distributed. And that's what the day was. It was kind of cloudy, but then the sun would pop out. So it still had that warmth feel. And that's what the picture is showing. The other thing is you don't have a lot of shadows. You can see the detail in her jacket underneath her cap her uh the lid of her cap and you can perfectly see her face if you wanted to get a little bit crazier you could use a graduated filter here and maybe darken this up a little bit by bringing the exposure down or you could do the shadows which i tend to go towards the shadows so it just kind of darkens up the shadows not the whole image so everything that's the three adidas stripes here anything down here and by her by her side would not be touched just as shadows here, which it does a good job of darkening it up. I feel that if I did the, the actual exposure, darken the exposure, it would ruin the image. 
You can also do a, a, a radial filter here and brighten up her face just a little bit. That's probably too much. And then raise the shadows so you see a little bit more of her brow. Close that up. And then there you go. You should be all set. So guys, if this helped, I usually don't start at the very top because a lot of times my pictures are either overexposed or underexposed and I have to get the color, all sorts of stuff right first before I can start messing with the brights, the darks, the whites, the blacks, the tone curve. I usually set uh, my calibration first, then I go towards my sharpening uh, and then I do this lens correction and then I go to my tone curve. If not, I will do some adjustment on the exposure, the shadows first and then do the tone curve. It just depends on how the picture comes out. Do not be afraid of using auto so you get a pretty good picture to start out with. Once you have a couple that you like, switch back to manual and mess around with whatever it is you need. If you have a certain workflow where you like to work with underexposed pictures or if you like to work with overexposed pictures. Um, but first, start practicing what your workflow is, what you guys prefer. But this is how I do a picture um, and the, the order that I go into so that it best fits the way my style is, as opposed to starting at the very top and going all the way to the bottom. You have no idea how many times I've seen tutorials where people mess with this stuff at the very top, then they do all the HSL, the split toning, and then they come all the way down to calibration and they mess up all the color up and it does, it, it's counterintuitive. It doesn't make sense. So if this tutorial was helpful for you guys, hit the like button. Uh, if you have any comments, comment below. below. Um, if you guys wanna see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button so you guys don't miss them. And let me know in the comments. I will do more videos like this. This, this is fun. I like teaching. I like showing you guys what I've learned so far. And it's just another voice for you guys to hear and learn from. So if it helps you guys, great. That, that's the whole point of this video. Uh, with that being said, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one next week. Bye.